I'm really excited to get our conference started. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am Caleb McKinney, and I am your chair of the board of directors for the National Postdoc Association. And yeah, <laughs> thank you. You all are too kind. So I come to you from uh, Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., where I serve as Associate Dean for Graduate and Postdoc Training and Development and Assistant Vice President of Master's Programs for our Medical Center. And so I got to tell you, time flies. This year, we're going to be celebrating our 20th anniversary of serving the postdoctoral community. Yep. I'd also like to note that the MPA now has over 28,000 members, the highest number of members in our history. So we have many colleagues here in the audience who have seen and contributed to the various phases of our journey uh, and contributed to the evolution of our mission and our vision. So as I reflect back on what we've accomplished, uh, John Cotter's stepwise model of change comes to mind. And so for those unfamiliar with Cotter's model, in order to enact systemic change, we need to create a sense of urgency, form a powerful coalition, create a vision for change, communicate the vision, remove obstacles, create short-term wins, build on the change and anchor the change in culture and in systems. In 2002, the founding board, oh, I got really loud. <laughs> the founding board was composed of postdoctoral representatives from across the country, each a chair or founding member of an institutional postdoctoral association. This group was that coalition of change agents who convened and expressed an urgency for broad support for a national postdoctoral association that could provide focus and affect positive change for postdocs. And so in light of how far we've come as an organization, I would like to provide a special 20 year anniversary chairs recognition of the founding seven MPA members, Avi Speer, Carol Manahan, Claudina Stevenson, Orfu Buxton, Artie Patel, Karen Christofferson, and Raymond Clark. Yeah. I, think, I think one of them may be here, I don't know. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Cheers to you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And so each of, you will be, each of them will be getting a plaque uh, in the mail in recognition of their pioneering work. And I want to give a special shout out to Alberto Roca for reconnecting us with this group. So thank you to the founding seven. Our organization has grown and flourished in establishing and communicating a mission and vision that supports and serves the postdoctoral community. Now we, we still have lots of work to do to actually fully realize our vision towards an inclusive community where all postdocs are empowered, valued, recognized, and supported in their current and future endeavors. But we've come a long way over the last 20 years and uh, of removing obstacles and celebrating wins. Thank you to the heroic efforts of our founding seven and all of the MPA leaders that would follow. So I do think we are at an inflection point. Um, right now where our collective momentum will see actionable change in the postdoc experience in the foreseeable future. We're building on the change with all of the high visibility efforts underway. We seek to anchor those changes into policies, in resources and funding, in training environments, and in professional opportunities for our postdoctoral community. <laughs> Stevie, are you here? I'm going to recognize them anyway. So under the leadership of our past board chair, Stevie Eberly, the development and implementation of our most recent strategic plan has grounded our work to contribute to and respond to these high visibility uh, national efforts. So I knew I had pretty large shoes to fill when I started my board uh, chair term this past January. Uh, Stevie Eberly is Executive Director and Assistant Dean for BioSci Careers at Stanford uh, Medicine and has made enormous contributions to our organization, particularly as they say around getting our house in order. 
which included reinforcing important internal communication strategies and onboarding our executive director, Tom Kendis. They also kept us grounded in inclusive excellence, which included conceptualizing and convening the task force that launched our Impact Fellows Program. Uh, they've been an amazing colleague and contributor toward our mission and our personal and professional development as MTA leaders. So I wanted to take this moment to formally recognize Stevie Eberly with the MTA uh, Chair Appreciation Award. <laughs> now, whenever I can find them at some point, I will we'll do our photo op. <laughs> So lastly, well lastly for me and then I'm sitting down and other people are talking, um, <laughs> many of you have been involved with mobilizing these efforts at your home institutions, professional societies, and through volunteering with our MTA activities. This conference is not only an amazing opportunity to share ideas and learn from each other, but also a great opportunity to learn about the ways that you can contribute to the MTA activities and mission. We've got various ways that you can get involved through working on committees, task forces, leading those committees and task forces, um, as well as serving on the MTA board of directors or advisory groups. I reflect back on my own personal growth over the past six years volunteering with MTA, uh, from a diversity officer to a board member, serving as treasurer and now board chair. And I feel like I've gained a lot of perspective and new interprofessional skills through this work and these experiences as well as really valuable relationships with many colleagues. Our committee meter leaders are ready to meet you throughout the conference to discuss their work and opportunities to engage with their activities. And I look forward to our fellowship. Everyone, my name is Dr. Nilakshi Mungra, and I am an invent scholar from Seattle Children's Research Institute. As you have seen from this video, Seattle Children's is committed to bringing together scientists from various backgrounds to join the battle against pediatric disorders. To this end, the Invent at SC Postdoctoral Scholars Program is aimed at helping shape next generation researchers while driving the development and the translation of novel therapies to combat childhood diseases. This program was specifically created to address the lack of ethnic, racial, and gender diversity that exists in the biotech field. And while adult therapies remain the mainstay of pharmaceutical industries, there is a need to shift the focus towards the development of drugs that can specifically help sick children. The Invent at SC Postdoctoral Scholars Program remains committed to ensuring equity, diversity, and inclusion. Therefore, recruitment will be focused on providing opportunities to outstanding scientists from disadvantaged backgrounds who have often been underrepresented in the biotech field. The program itself is uniquely designed such that the postdoctoral scholar will not only be working on a particular project across a range of disciplines, but they will have the opportunity to, to learn outside of the lab by taking on courses in drug discovery, business development, and IP management, amongst others. Moreover, they will have access to clinical and biotech mentors with the aim of providing the right education, entrepreneurial skills, and infrastructure required for them to ultimately take the lead towards small business innovation or technology transfer programs. My personal experience of the program thus far has been very enriching. Seattle Children's provides a supportive environment for the scholars' professional development and learning. As a student who has been in academia for the last 10 years, I can testify that this program is allowing us to gain deeper insights into an industry setting. There is a need for us to move away from traditional ways of teaching so that we can better equip our scientists to the realities of life. This program is responding to this need by allowing us scholars to better understand the various processes and the skills required in order to move a putative therapy from an experimental setting to a clinical setting. Therefore, I invite other young researchers out there to connect with us and learn more about the program, as well as the potential impact that it will have on healthcare and society at large. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Neil Akshi, and thank you to Seattle Children's for that. That concludes our, our welcome uh, session for today. Yeah, I, I think you have a break coming up, and then you dive into all of your programming today. So enjoy the conference. Thanks for coming to this session, and we'll see you out there.